All right, here we go. Hi, guys. How you doing today? Hi, everybody. We are the Ungodly Geeks. I'm Joe. I'm Luke. And today, you know, sometimes he's Luke. Sometimes he doesn't know who he is. So, um, so we're going to start off with a real quick news of the stupid because we don't have a whole lot. And I, I didn't get a chance to uh, look at much. Yes. But uh, this this one story is, is very, very funny. Um, at least to... <laughs> To us. It's, it's stupid. It is the best. It is the best story. There's an Arizona the city under siege by a graffiti artist who keeps writing penis man on everything. <laughs> oh god. It is it is amazing. Um, I am Luke and I am fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's amazing though, right? Like anybody who lives in Tampa, Arizona, or uh, while everyone like around us were worried about like climate change or World War Three the residents of Tampa, Arizona are concerned with someone going around spray painting penis man in all caps on everything. That's great. It's fucking my garage. God damn it. <laughs> penis man. I'm fucking your penis man. Yeah. <laughs> I can be penis man. Cause I am a man with a penis. Um, it's just like, it's kind of hilarious though. Um, basically it's, uh, happened around 40 times throughout December. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, like, this is not like a once or twice, maybe a couple dozen times thing. Like, no, this has happened 40 times. Um, yeah. It's been painted on old buildings, traffic signs, people's houses, stuff like that. Like, it, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, but, yeah, and nobody knows what's going on. Um, that's it. People putting penis, man. There, there's a... It could be a single person. It could be a group of people. We don't actually know. It's just... It's an activist group. <laughs> it's an act- <laughs> Penis man. It's like, Standing up for penis man. I don't know. I want penis man and the person putting the little hats on bur- on the pigeons. Pigeons in Las Vegas. To get together. Yeah. They, yeah. Need, they, need to, they need to collaborate somehow. I don't know how. But yeah, they yep. need to collaborate and go boom. It's fucking penis hats on all the pigeons. <laughs> Cowboy hats, but with a dick in the middle, like. Yep. F- and it has penis man embroidered embroidered on it or something. I don't know. Yes, or spray painted across like where the pigeons are. They throw out a bunch of uh, bird seed or breadcrumbs. Yeah. These pigeons covering up, so they come in and like, God damn it, we gotta get these fucking hats off the pigeons. <laughs> Wait, what's it say under the pigeons? Penis man. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Why is the penis man in our city now? <laughs> um, Fucking pigeon hat, pigeon hat, penis man strikes again. We must defeat him somehow, but first we must understand who and what he is. God, we're retarded. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, but you know that was that was it. That's all we had for uh, news and stupid. But we have other things to talk about. Um. So Luke, what were we? Yes. Uh, what were we else? What else were we gonna touch on? So one of the other, it's not a, it's not a huge story, not as big as uh, the other story we have, but um, not as big Dr. as Penis Strange. Man. <laughs> yeah, not as big as Penis Man because that's pretty important. Uh, so Doctor Strange two, it's currently being filmed and stuff comes out. Uh, I think later this year, maybe next year. This probably now probably gonna come out next year. Uh, they lost their director. Scott right. Derrickson is stepping down as the director for Doctor Strange uh, in the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, the studio confirmed his departure in a statement the, that it came to creative differences, which is their studio speak for he, they probably got pissed at each other. Yeah. Either his vision for the movie didn't match what Marvel wanted or something was going on that they didn't like. Right. Uh, let's see. Marvel and I mutually agreed to part ways. The thing that I'm wondering is if this is um, in credit, because a lot of times when we get the news of a director parting ways, right. uh, if they're if they're careful with it, the, the news comes out, but it's like it's been done eight months ago. Right. So right. the movie's been filming. They've already kind of got their shit back together. This doesn't look like there's any of that going on here. So there's no word right now of it being 
um, delayed, but unless this this one might be out further than I expected, I thought this one was supposed to be close because uh, right. I know this come the movie comes out around right after um, the uh, who is it Scarlet Witch and um, Vision show is supposed to happen because oh, that's uh, supposed to tie into this WandaVision, yeah. Yeah, on, on Disney Plus, this fall, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Disney Plus, coming in 2021. So, I think this was 2021, maybe. So, I mean, maybe it won't get pushed back, maybe it will. Uh, at this point, you know, we'll have to see. Marvel's not had too bad a record when, you know, they lose a director for something. Ant-Man lost right. the, its director at first. Um, it's not as bad as Lucasfilm has been. Right. They lost a lot of directors, and then who fucking like you mentioned when we first talked about this uh, uh, fucking Warner Brothers cannot keep a director to save their lives. Yeah, like yeah. Flash. And... Yeah, like DC <laughs> has lost more directors than I think we've had directors in the MCU. So it's like, well, damn near. <laughs> you know, like it, it seems like it seemed for a while there. It was like every other week we got some announcement that DC has lost a director for insert random movie here. I mean, I mean, it was just like, Flash oh. movie itself has probably lost four or five at least. I mean, yeah. Um, what about that Ben Affleck Batman movie? How many times did we get a an announcement that the director was lost for that? Um, or like the same thing with Suicide Squad. Like, like it was just like, what is going on here? Why can't DC keep directors? <laughs> yeah, I think a big part of that is DC releasing information way too early. Maybe um, that they're they're throwing that stuff out there super super early, and then it's like it's it's not happening. You're not. They're having all these problems and issues. Yeah, but. This, I, I, I think, I think it'll be all right. Scott Derrickson, uh, I looked up his IMDb, and he's got a lot of writer credits. Um, for some good, like he, he was a writer on the first um, Doctor Strange. Right. Um, he was. Uh, let's see. He wrote horror movies before that, and he, in he directed a couple horror movies before uh uh but i mean you said he wrote horror been... movies before doc strange yeah wrote I'm, and directed so. honestly if i'm gonna like sit there and if i'm sitting there and i look at the entirety of doc strange and some of the weird sh- creepy shit you get in that movie um i could see his influence from writing horror movies in there a little bit oh yeah and that's that's apparently what they want this movie supposedly is supposed to be the first "Quote unquote Marvel horror movie," right? Um, which, if, if that like of the MCU movies, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, and I mean that sounds cool. I've liked everything they've done so far, so right. I think they'll be fine. But it's just it's just one of those things uh, you hear that, and it's likely then I think they'll probably end up delaying it. But who knows? Maybe they'll find somebody quick. I could only hope so. I I would honestly, because they have a really good record, and this guy seems like somebody who's not done a lot of big budget movies. Mm -hmm. I think they go and like look at some of the directors Bloomhouse has had that have been successful, and find one of their directors that's done some smaller stuff and be like, "Hey, uh, you fucking want to do some psychological mind fuckery? (laughs) Here you go." (laughs) Yep, that would be awesome. Do it with the Sorcerer Supreme. He's just got to wave his hands around a lot. <laughs> yep. Do some weird uh, motions with his fingers. Make some symbols in the air. Yep. Uh, the only requirement is his cape has to be funny. His cape has <laughs> to have a mind of its own. It doesn't speak, but it does a lot of goofy shit. But it has to be funny. No it has to be funny. I mean, that is always a requirement. Like, that's kind of how Marvel movies work, is they have that banter back and forth where it's just hilarious. Yeah, you know, yeah I, I'm interested to see how they do that with this movie specifically, uh, if it is supposed to be a horror. Because that's, that's not a bad thing to have some of that humor and horror. Um, yeah, yeah, no, you can sit there and have that, that, that sort of, uh, that comic relief 
mm-hmm. I think could could fit in to a decently directed horror film. And then it, it the next the next scares hit even harder when you've kind of had that yeah that little bit of relief when it's it's nonstop. Then it's like okay. Yeah, because you're you're more relaxed. So like mm-hmm. you're like oh okay this was funny haha ha, lighthearted oh my god you know like yeah. That guy just got his head cut off, or something. Speaking of, I want to see uh, there's a movie that's I think it's out now um, that terrifies me just by the name. It's I think it's underwater. That's uh-huh. all the title is. Oh. Uh, these there's like a research facility built at the bottom. It's totally generic, like story wise. Right. Uh, a thousand times, but research center is built at the bottom of the Marianas Trench. Uh, researchers are down there. People are whatever drillers. They're down there, and then we dug too deep. Happens. Huh. Interesting. And something like the the facility's busted, and they actually have to walk on the fucking ocean floor from one uh, one facility to like an old mothballed facility to try and get saved. And of course, there's some fucking deep sea monsters or something. And I don't know. Looking at it, it absolutely terrifies me to my core because I have a like I open any open body of water, even <laughs> if it's a fucking lake. Yeah. Terrifies me. Vasilophobia. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, the, and then being underwater and at dark, like that, no. But at the same time, I love monster movies. I love monster horror movies. So I'm like, that sounds, that looks so awesome and so terrifying at the same time. I kind of want to see it. Now, the scientist in me is like, has a lot of questions. Oh yeah, my, like the, how are you fucking going out on the bottom of the Marianas Trench, like at all? <laughs> yeah, like like how the pressure, is, dude. The like the engineering and the materials that went into like the construction of something like that underwater that deep. It's like, huh? Yeah. Okay. One person's ever been to the bottom of the trench, and they had a very specially designed, very tiny, like sub. So, and that more was really men cool. More have walked on the moon than yes. have been to the Mariana Stretch. Yes, more, more people have been to the moon than have been to the bottom of the ocean, right? Mm-hmm. And I actually, uh, that brings me to another topic somewhat related. When someone asked, I, I don't remember where I read it, but someone was asking, like, why have we had more people on the moon than we have? Like, why do we know the space space better than we know our ocean? It's like, because we can look up and we can look and see the space and we can observe it yeah. in various ways. We can't go under the ocean because the water would crush us. So it's like, yeah, water pressure, and I mean, you can just look out at space, and looking is easy. You can't you can't look the way you can. Yeah. Throughout the entirety of the ocean. I mean, water it's doesn't just... water doesn't like play well with light, so you're not getting a lot of penetration. Pardon me from light sources, you know, and it's like. And, and once again, there's an immense pressure. Um, mm-hmm. So that's that's why I'm like, okay, so how are they walking on the bottom of the ocean floor six yeah. miles below the ocean floor itself? Like, that it's is one of those, intense. It's one of those, okay, I get, I know this shouldn't work, but if it's entertaining enough, I can, like, you, you can kind of Yeah, the, the that's the suspension of disbelief. Yeah. 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 It's like, okay, so, oh, they have these super... <laughs> Super uh, pressurized super suits. Okay. Yeah, they have right. pressurized super suits that that somehow press against the crushing, lonely, darkened depths of the ocean. All right. Exactly. Okay. Cool. It doesn't Whatever. work that way, but all right, I'll I'll accept it for right now. Whatever make the movie picture show. Yeah. Whatever make it fun. I I'm okay with. Well, you know, there are times where I, I sit there and I think about these ridiculous sci-fi premises and these ridiculous, oh. like, horror movie premises, and I'm like, huh. Like, I know it's a movie, it's there for entertainment, but that's not at all how reality works. So, yeah, you know, just, that's just me. I'm that I'm that guy that, that ruins things like that for himself, because I'm curious, and I know how things... I know maybe a little too much about how some things work, and I was like... That wouldn't work. That's so dumb. You know, I feel like Neil deGrasse Tyson when he points out that things are wrong in movies. He's like, shut up, Neil. Yeah. You don't want to hear mean, your shit. When it's so teeny esoteric, it's like, no, Neil, no one no one cares. But you yeah, know. like when he was in the... Uh, like, okay, 
that the example of that for me was when he was watching Titanic and said, "Hey, yep. the sky is wrong." And then for the, the re-release, for the re- yeah, like for the re-release, for where you are in the world, it's it's wrong. And then for the re-release, they fixed it. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, hey, that's like, cool. Uh, no, we took a picture of the sky in that exact location. And he's like, yeah, but this was seventy years ago. Right. <laughs> so it's different. And they're like, God damn it, fucking science, man. <laughs> Uh, your personal astrophysicist. Shut up, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix your movies. Stop ruining shit. It's fun. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, no, that was that's just one of those. I sometimes feel like I'm just I'm being a killjoy when I think of stuff like that. Like that doesn't work. Yeah, there's some movies I uh, like. If the movie's good enough, though, and I don't, it, it doesn't. You know, it might kind of in the back of my head, I might think about it, but it doesn't affect my enjoyment uh if the movie's boring then you know something happens and i'm like oh well that that then that's all i'm gonna fucking think about is critiquing shit when it's like it's not good anyway yeah i don't know Uh, we'll see i i think i I just kind of want to watch it it's it's a january movie which uh everyone's like like january goes from 90% 90% of the movies released in January are trash. And then every couple of years we have that one January gem that yeah. like comes out of nowhere and kind of surprises the fuck out of everybody. It's like, wow, that movie was amazing. Yeah. I was like, Oh wait, that was actually good. And apparently this one was, uh, it's a Fox movie. It was supposed to come out in, um, 2000 fucking 17. Uh, I thought you were going to say 2006. Like, holy fuck! No, 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 not that old. <laughs> it is the it is, it is the movie equivalent of Duke Nukem Forever. <laughs> oh, Forever was supposed to come out. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I mean that that, that, that game took 14 years to come out, and it was trash. Yep. So <laughs> thankfully, it's not quite that. But it uh. It was like supposed to come out in 2017 or maybe early 2018, right. and then the Disney Fox merger stuff happened, so they shelved it. And then Disney's like, "Well, we have this fucking little horror movie, uh, put it out." Which, speaking of, they got another horror movie that was uh, the basically an X Men movie, uh, X Men New Mutants. Uh, oh yeah, was to come out a couple of years ago. Fox did this as a horror movie uh and then they released um apocalypse to completely like mediocre response which i still need to watch that (laughs) yeah and then they released uh soon this was supposed to come out around the same time or maybe a year after um the um phoenix whatever the hell they called the last x-men movie they made and that movie was trash, complete and utter, just dog shit. And I think part of that killed Fox's desire to even release this movie. Like the trailer had come out, they were ready to release it. It was finished. Um, internally, I like there were people talking about the fact that the movie was so bad it was virtually unreleasable. Ouch! And it was just a, an utter disaster. I want to say this movie was one of those movies that had director who had been uh, they, they, they lost a director like part of the way through they had to refilm a ton of stuff not just normal reshoots but like filming completely things completely over again right. um, and then it was in a busted ass state Disney takes over and what I, I didn't know I hadn't read anywhere that Disney had been doing their own work on it and apparently serious work because obviously this movie's done all the actors and actresses have gone on to do other stuff which they're not all huge people but like Arya Stark I think is one of the bigger people Macy Williams isn't uh, um, actually she's about the only one that comes to mind that I know was in the movie so yeah I know the the, I know I've seen the I I can't just can't think of her name the woman who's running the facility I guess the the, I don't know if she's a doctor or, or psychologist or whatever or doctor of psychology, but um, so they, they're I think they're like the biggest actresses in the movie, right? But you got to imagine those people are still off doing other things. Disney put forward the money to get them to come back again outside of their normal reshoot contracts, 
uh, and apparently had been reshooting a ton of stuff for this movie. And then just like last week, they released a new trailer, like a ignore what you saw before. This is now the trailer. Uh, and I mean, the trailer looks good. So there's a chance that this isn't going to be a complete and utter disaster. I thought there's no way this movie ever saw the light of day. Or if it did, it was going to be streaming service on. No, oh, apparently Antonio Banderas is in the movie, so that's... Oh, that's the other thing. One of the big things they changed. Originally, the Fox cut of this movie had um, someone else, I can't remember the actor, playing Mr. Sinister. That was the big tease. That was yeah. going to be the after credits tie-in to like the next chapter of the X-Men. Well, then your X-Men movie, your, your, your fucking big Phoenix, Rise of the Phoenix or whatever, bombs. Doesn't bomb a little bit, bombs hard fucking core. Right, To the right. point where Marvel, Marvel's like, just give it to us and we can write all of this away and pretend it never happened. And so they got rid of that teaser and Antonio Banderas is now in uh, the after credits thing. Uh, but they haven't released what he is. Right. So I'm thinking, I'm I'm hoping anyway, and maybe, and I might be wrong. Maybe maybe Disney isn't super confident in this. I'm hoping that this will be the link to the X Men. Right. And right now, there's no. This isn't on like the Marvel's Cinematic Universe timeline or anything like that. Like I don't I I don't know if Kevin Feige has talked about this movie or anything. So it might not technically be part of the MCU. Right. But maybe maybe that teaser is what brings it in, right? Like Antonio Banderas ends up being something big and then they're like, Oh yeah, by the way, this is the this is the lead in for the X Men or you know, whatever. Uh, uh, I think that would be awesome. According to the Wikipedia page, um Upcoming American horror film in the superhero genre based on the Marvel comics, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it was initially developed to be an installment of the X-Men film series, but was later changed so that it could take place on Disney's Marvel Cinematic Universe following Disney's acquisition of 20th Century Fox. Oh, so maybe it is in the MCU. <clears throat> yeah, so that's... Uh, I mean, if, if, if that also kind of... I mean, they like playing games uh, with the MCU. So they, because this wasn't to like the, when they did the timeline and stuff, this wasn't a part of that. Um, right. So I wonder if the idea behind this is it's like a stealth release in addition of like, oh, by the way, you thought we were done for the year. You thought the year hadn't started. Ha ha. Guess mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm I, and, and, and I'm down to see Antonio Banderas in anything that's not a Star Wars movie. So, I mean, I'm down to see Antonio Banderas. Pardon me, yeah. in anything really. You know, I, I like I like Antonio Banderas. Um, I do. I think he's great. I think the only thing I wouldn't probably watch him in is that uh, Spy Kids movie he was in. <laughs> oh God, man! Um, like not even he could save that movie. Like he's a great actor. I love him in anything that he's in that I've seen. You know, he's just sometimes he adds great comic relief. Sometimes he enhances the uh, drama of the of the whole thing or whatever. Um, as long as he's not playing a splicer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm down. Uh, but you know, let's yeah. move on from that because I think we're done, right? No more to, yeah, more to talk about. It. I, I mean, I mean, that's all. I had nothing else on that. I just thought it was. I thought it was really interesting. When I saw that trailer, I was like, "No shit, it's it's actually happening." Yeah, I, I mean, I'm reading this uh, Wikipedia article, and apparently, um, where was it? Uh, at the end of the month, Boone confirmed that the latest version of the film followed his original vision, and he said that he was happy to promote it as his own film. So that's kind. That's yeah. That's that's a uh, kind of nice, you know. I Blue, think that, said that? Josh Boone, the guy, did the screenplay. Oh, he's the Oh, okay. No, yeah, and and the director. Yeah, he's he's both, but he did screenplay, director, and all that. So like, he feels good about the movie now versus whatever else you know he was doing. So, yeah, um, well, that's good to hear. 
And it releases on the 3rd of April, so... Pretty pretty soon. A couple months from now. Who's the... Oh, God, my legs. Ah, ah. Why can I no find the director? For what? Ah, uh, for this. Oh, uh, okay, Josh Boone is the director as well. I, I said that. Did, did you? Okay, I heard... Whatever the hell he did, screenplay and director. So he did both. He does he does all the things. Yeah, the screenplay part. (laughs) He is the director, Luke. No worries. We have this. Rasputin. Mason Williams is playing Wolfsbane. That's interesting. I wonder if they go full fucking Wolfsbane. I don't know. I guess we'll. I don't even know what that is. So maybe I should find out. (laughs) If I'm not mistaken, Wolfsbane is a. Uh, fucking is a werewolf basically. I mean, that, she's a mutant that that turns into a werewolf with bat wings. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know about bat wings, but no, yeah, she's a fucking full on werewolf basically from like the weirder. A, sc- a Scottish mutant, Wolfbane's possesses the ability to transform into a wolf or into a traditional state somewhere between human and a wolf that is similar to a werewolf. So yeah. she's furry bait, pretty much. <laughs> Ugh. But I mean, you know, you go full ass werewolf, and it can be really fucking cool. Dog soldiers is still a fucking nightmare inducing to me, but it was a badass movie. <laughs> All right, well, that's that's interesting to say the least. Um, I guess we'll see how they do with this. Yeah. Well, please don't suck. <laughs> I mean, I expected it to suck, so I'm still going to go... Like, if we go and see it, I'm still going to go in with that full-on expectation that it's going to suck. And yeah, then that I, way... Honestly, I was, I was the same boat. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I, we go in with those really, really low, almost non-existent expectations. It'll be really hard, um, even for Fox, to let you down, so... Yeah. If it ends up being pretty good, it's like, oh, Yeah. I mean, even if it ends up being surprised. positively mediocre, like, all right, that was still good. That was still really good. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Because you yeah. go in with those tremendously low expectations, so. Uh, oh, my God, Dark Phoenix. I don't think you could lower your expectations that much. Um, it's just still disappointed. On screen <laughs> rant. Where I'm at right now, they, they're, they're there's the biggest, worst action movie box office bombs. Um, yeah, Dark Phoenix, Rambo, Last Blood, uh, Gemini Man, Terminator, Dark Fate, Charlie's Angels. I didn't even know they released a Charlie's Angels movie this year. What the fuck? Um, Hellboy, Cold Pursuit, Midway, Godzilla, King of the Monsters was a flop, really? Yeah, technically. I mean, it, it didn't make the money back. It was unfortunate because it was actually a pretty good movie. Alita Battle Angel. Yeah. Eh, whatever. You know, I think the only movie I saw on this list was uh, Rambo Last Blood. <laughs> I enjoyed it. it. wasn't bad. Yeah. I mean, it was what I expected. Pretty so much, I was yeah. okay with that. Yeah, you gotta go in. That, that's another one of those movies where it's like, all right, Sylvester Stallone's in his 70s. We gotta have low expectations here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, no, dude's 73, man. Like, god damn. Fuck. Just, 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 just quit, buddy. Just quit. <laughs> Retire. You, 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 you did it. You did, you did good. You did good, buddy. You can, you can go to sleep now. It's fine. All right, so let's move on. Uh, final thing, big topic we want to talk about is uh, Pokemon. Yes. Fucking Pokemon. Um, I, you know, obviously we had uh, Sun and Moon released, or not Sun and Moon, uh, Sword and Shield released uh, this past year. And it's gotten kind of mixed reviews. I know a lot of the people I know who have played it have really enjoyed it. Um, but then I'm sitting there and I'm looking and reading and watching reviews on it. And, um, like, there are things that critics have pointed out about it that might be minor for some people that, for me, would be, like, a major psychotic hatred. So I'm kind of glad I haven't 
uh, invested in it. But, um, you know, on top of everything that we've talked about, everyone everyone has talked about, you look at bad textures and mediocre gameplay and underwhelming exploration and stuff, because they say, it's going to be open world, and then it's not open world. It's like, eh, you know. Yeah, open areas. There's like one open area, and it only links to two of the other areas, so it's like, what the fuck is even the <laughs> point? You know, like, come on. It, 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 I don't know. It definitely does not live up to a $60 console release, which I think is my biggest issue with it. Yeah. Is yeah. that that's what they did with it. Yeah. And the reason we're bringing it up now is news just dropped from the Nintendo Direct that uh, there's good and there's bad. The good is they're going to release 200 new Pokemon over... Then uh, the next, who knows? Basically, over the coming year, in the coming year, they're going to be releasing yeah. updates that add uh, the ability to trade um, Pokemon into uh, into Sword and Shield from other generations, new and old, mm-hmm. which is kind of neat. Um, if you want to be able to catch the Pokemon, from what I understand, you have to buy the expansions. But so, oh, so you are having to pay for the fucking Pokemon? No. You don't have to pay for access to the Pokemon. Um, like I said, you can sort you can trade them in from other sources. Like let's say there's a Mon that's on this 100, 100 Pokemon list that only popped up in say Pokemon X. You have Pokemon X. You have Pokemon Home now, which is supposed to release later this year. You can transfer it from X to Home, and then from Home to Sword or Shield with the update. Well, what um, I mean is, if you want to, they're not adding these new Pokemon to the wild. They are not adding the new Pokemon to the wild, but at the same time, they are not gating the Pokemon off. And by the way, when we say new Pokemon, they're releasing all the Pokemon that everyone wanted them to release in the first goddamn place. Yeah, yeah, they're releasing uh, Mon they, from old, older games, older generations that a lot of people feel they should have been included. I'm, I'm, from I'm Dexter. not, I'm not of the same mindset. Like the way I look at it is. All the Pokemon should be available to add to your decks. I do not feel or agree with that all the Pokemon should necessarily be capturable in the game. Um, because, I can understand that. Yeah. yeah. That, like that, that adds a whole lot of stuff. Um, so yeah. I can, I can kind of get where they're coming from. So I don't necessarily think that I should be able to go into this game and be able to catch all 840 fucking Pokemon or however many there yeah. are. Um the amount, though, that they released the game with was pathetic. Yeah. It, like, to be honest. And, and that's coming from someone who hasn't even played a Pokemon game right. since the fucking second gen. On top of that, now they're saying, well, okay, we're adding them to the game, but they're really not. If you have all the Pokemon games, you're, you're golden. You can go back and add all your Pokemon and transfer them over. Yeah. If you haven't been buying Pokemon games for the last five or six years... Yeah, no, I haven't bought You're a game since Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, so it's like... Until eh. you buy the DLC. Right. So, in a way, I mean, they still are uh, selling Pokemon that they should have added in the first place. These aren't new, for the most part. No. no. These are old Pokemon. I mean, and if, if anybody it, isn't familiar um, with what Dexit was, yeah. um, it was basically a, a small controversy that went around... That people were very upset. <laughs> I, I say small because it's pointless and stupid, but that's my opinion on it. I agree with what a lot of people are saying, but yeah, I get it. Um, yeah. But well, yeah, uh, the thing is, cutting the Pokemon, the Pokedex down, one hundred percent makes sense. Right. Um, well, more, like, more less cutting the Pokedex down. Like I said, just not making the Pokemon necessarily available because of whatever fucking reasons they have. Like I believe the you decks have to animate every single one of them. Well, see, here's the pre- hold, hold up, hold up. I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that, Luke, because that's the problem. That's the problem where everybody was really upset by. Um, there was an inst. There was a uh, a uh, instance, a, a an event that happened a while back where basically Game Freak went through the process of creating a large number of 3d models and renders and and all this and animations that were supposed to be high enough for us to use 
on newer gen consoles. And they went through all this to kind of future proof everything when they were making X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire and all that. So that was kind of the problem that a lot of people had was, well, you say you did this, you created all of these models, you animated them and everything so that you didn't have to worry about this later. Um, so why aren't you? And one of the reasons they gave for not including the Pokemon is they'd have to create models and animate them. Yeah. And it's like, Which but, apparently was just a lie. But you did that. You said you did that well, was it years ago. Well, wasn't the space? Yeah, but like... Storage space? Okay, but The Witcher 3 is a 29.8 gigabyte game shipping on a 32 meg- gigabyte cart. Yeah. No, I, I, I completely agree because they have no idea how to do anything with the uh, fucking um, size management. Because they have textures that would fucking look bad on a 3DS. So, it's it's inexcusable. I mean, what, like, the shortcuts they've taken with this game to come out and say this is the new $60 console Pokemon game. Yeah. It's, I mean, don't get me wrong, again, it's, it's Pokemon. And like you said, the people that love it, love it. And a lot of people love it and still hate it. Because they, you know, it's the Pokemon loop. They love that, but there's just so much shit about this game that's, it's, it really sucks. Uh, and then they're going to now sell this season pass on top of that $60 when the game wasn't worth $60 to begin with. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm, I'm, like, I've been done with Pokemon for a while. It pisses me off more because early on I was really excited for this game. Because I've wanted this game since I was fucking playing Red and Blue on my goddamn uh, gray Game Boy. Yeah, I, I think I think for me, um, I've wanted a big time console release Pokemon game, and my my vision was always incredibly grand and probably just really stupid. But I've always wanted one of those giant. I, I want a big, long Pokemon game where it's right, like yeah. you know every. Pokemon is available in the game and you go you're able to explore and go across all the regions of all the Pokemon games that have released thus far and sit there and look for new Pokemon and get all the badges defeat the elite fours in those areas you know like like that that's what I want Be that's what I've always wanted Pokemon champion right um Honestly. I I would be okay with them releasing that as like even like an MMO style game, you know, I would be I would pay for that. Yeah, maybe Which that's I just me. Uh, oh my god, if they didn't, that's even bigger. I mean, if they did an MMO style game, that would make all the money. But to me, I I I know their argument of well, that's impossible. That that game would be massive. And at first, I'm like, yeah, no, they're right. And then I'm like, oh no, wait, Red Dead Redemption exists. GTA Five exists. Mm-hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. these fucking games that are like insanely huge Um, Outer Worlds exists like oh no you don't have a leg to stand on you you can't even do the simplest thing right I mean maybe that's the problem is the studio isn't a studio that should be making a console game I mean, maybe, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're looking, you're looking at Game Freak, like Game Freak is is the one and I I, I don't know that they've never made one because I'm not entirely familiar with everything game freak has done yeah. um but i can definitely say that like their biggest games have always been the pokemon games and aside I mean, from Breath of the wild that, right that, it is another example of you can't you you're gonna tell me you couldn't do more yeah and that right? exists like you look at what breath of the wild offers like it it, it being on something like the switch it looks fantastic. It plays fantastic, and while and it is big, giant, open world, and while it's maybe not as populous as it could be, it's still amazing. It's still a great yeah. achievement for for the Zelda team, and uh, and like, are you, I don't know. Like you can't. You got you got Skyrim on the Switch. <laughs> you know. I was gonna say. Speaking of Elder Scrolls. Um, I think the day that I was like, okay, they can do Pokemon now. They can do it right. Was the first time I played um, Oblivion on the Xbox 360. Right, right. That just the the massiveness of that world just blew me away, and I was like, oh, oh, they can do Pokemon now. 
There's, there's, it, 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 it's, it's possible. Like, oh no, it, it totally is. Tons like, and tons of, and even if they did just one region and did it well enough, that would be, I mean, that would be enough. I, I want total. Well, you, what you describe is literally like the dream. Yes. Is like to have yeah. everything. But I mean, even if they did one region and did it good, like I think people would go ecstatic. If they did everything, they can have those cut quarters. You can have your basic animations the way they do in this game, where yeah. the Pokemon are, you know, oh, it's using this attack, and all the Pokemon does is jump up and down. It's yeah. like, okay, fine. You've given us, but you've given us everything, so we're not going to complain that Charizard isn't flying in the air and using a different fucking uh, breath attack for each of his different, you know, fire moves. Yeah. But. But right now, it's like you just fucking you went cheap with everything, and that's not normally what Nintendo does. Like any of the first party new release games, Breath of the Wild, Mario, um, they're they're fucking massive. Even like the simpler games, like Yoshi's Yarn Story or whatever, that game is fucking gorgeous. Yeah, um, I mean, look at Mario Odyssey. Yeah, oh god. Mario obviously is another example of okay, there's there's way more than 100 different 150 different enemies in this. And fucking there's thousands of different creatures and characters and I'm shit. I... Yeah, it's it's dumb though. But this whole situation with Pokémon uh yeah. gets worse cuz like we said, uh, you know, there's the whole adding extra Pokémon, but there there are DLC season passes. Yeah. Um, like, I, I season, don't know. You said season passes, correct? Not season pass. When season passes, as in, yeah, so each are... region's gonna probably be 30 bucks. No, 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 no. Oh. Um, so for $30, let's say you have Pokemon Sword, for $30, yeah. you get two expansions. Um, oh, okay. You get uh, one region and then another region that gets added later, and they add new Pokemon, like brand new Pokemon, not like your, you know, yeah. the, the other way. Um, you get some new trainers, you get a new rival, you get new gyms, so, kind of stuff. Um, and that's cool. If you have Pokemon Shield, you can also spend thirty dollars to get the same thing. If you have both games, you can spend sixty dollars to get it. Yeah. Uh, so it's like. Oh, that's cool. Um, and I know there are a lot of people out there who, who did buy both games. Um, I mean, I did that with X and Y. I did that with Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. So, like, I don't... I, I understand those people. Um, but it's like, if you buy both games, you still have to buy a uh, an expansion pass for each game. Yeah. Despite it basically being identical data. It's just that's just a mess. Like, like on top, yeah, on, on top, top of charging the expansion pass anyway. Even uh, I wonder, are those new Pokemon going to be a part of the two hundred that are accessible, but apparently not not catchable in the wild? Yeah, I I don't I don't know. Uh, you know there aren't that's super specifics on that just yet, but it's like it's yeah. still it's so dumb, <sighs> you know, like. At least do something where it's like if you own both games, you buy the expansion pass for one. Let's say maybe not, maybe not give it away for free for the other. Fine, I understand that, but like, give us a discount on the other, right? Yeah. You know, like like I just I just spent a hundred twenty dollars on your your game here, your games. So now I got to spend another sixty dollars to get all this content that probably should have been in the game from the get go. Oh, one hundred percent should have been. At this point, this is still a $60 game. Yeah. This isn't a $30 Pokemon game where then they're going to come out with, a year later, another game for fucking 30 or 40 bucks. Right, yeah. My, my uh, question is this. Are these free updates that they're going to be adding, like, are they going to fix the shitty textures in the game? Are they going to, yeah. you know, are they going to add animations to the Pokemon? Like, you cut these corners, but you didn't give us anything in exchange. So are you going to fix the corners you cut? I, don't know. I just, it's, but I mean, at, at the end of the day, they're like, ah, we're going to make it anyway. So eat it. Yeah. Basically that's, that's what it is. Like, 
I was sitting there reading, despite all the controversies about the game, and despite a lot of the people, a lot of critics giving it mediocre scores, it, it was, Pokemon Sword and Shield were still, like, the fastest selling games of their, their months or whatever, and it's like, oh, yeah. Alright, we can bitch, complain, and whine, piss, and moan all we want, but we're still gonna be stupid and buy them, right? Yeah, it makes me mad at myself that I bought now the fighter pass for, like, Smash Brothers, and and I can't remember. I know they, they've done other season passes where Nintendo just started experimenting with those because they didn't do those before. Yeah. They never had really been in the season pass market. And now this is the ultimate, like, okay, this is, yeah, now they've gone from dabbling to complete and utter just, this is basically robbery. Yeah. At this point. This I, is the dumbest fucking season pass bullshit. I'm not... This, opposed to like season pass type deals right mm-hmm. I, I, I I don't know if it's not content that should have been in the game right I yeah season pass I still dislike it I think it's DLC under a new term not like under a new label yeah. but if it continues expanding upon the game it doesn't feel like it was cut from the game and just it, like that kind of bullshit then it's like okay I'm 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 not so angry with that it's why I bought the season pass for Smash Brothers I thought okay we've got every character plus new characters and they want to continue to add characters fine they're not charging a whole bunch and you get all of them with the fighter pass so yeah. I'm like okay that's not that's not a bad deal um fucking ugh yeah, this, I, I don't this know. One just, this one just stinks it's to high heaven. That and considering the game just came out, mm-hmm. it's yeah, it's it's been out for what two three months now. It came out in November, hasn't even been out three full months yet. It's like oh okay. Yeah, every like if they had done this, if they had announced, um, that a hey, later on down the line we're gonna do a season passes. We don't know what yet. We'll have two new areas or something. Maybe they do that much. Every every other aspect of this, all the Pokemon, everything else, should have been released with the 200 Pokemon free updates. Right. That stuff. Yeah. That should have been the, this is coming out now. This other, like, well, the season pass stuff should have been, like, late 2020, maybe 2021. That's when they start thinking about, or, or end of 2020, they start, you know, oh, we're going to release the season pass add this or that, and then they could have added more Pokemon, and I don't think people would have been as pissed, as long yeah. as their new Pokemon season right. pass should not be going, oh, hey, now you can get Bulbasaur. Like, oh, great, fantastic, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's 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 so stupid. I, I it, it, it frustrates me. But it's like, Nintendo, like, I want to say this is classic Nintendo, because it, it, it is in the sense that they just do whatever. <laughs> Nintendo sometimes is like the best at being like, hey, you know, we're we're giving you all the value, we're doing everything we can to make you happy. And then other times Nintendo's like, yeah, no, we're going to take all your fucking money. Fuck you. Give yeah. it to us. Yep. And it's like, oh, well shit. What what happened, Nintendo? I thought we were no fuck you. Give me your <laughs> goddamn money if you want the Pokémans. <laughs> it's like, why? And get it on you your doing this? Get on your knees too. Suck my fucking cock. Like, yeah. Oh wow! Okay, whoa! What's going on here? What would be what would be Nintendo with it is if you had to like have a 3DS connected to download the new content and then like connect that to your Switch. <laughs> and that would be really Nintendo of it. Like, oh, so we can't release the update normally, so you're gonna have to buy this, download this phone app. <laughs> we can't give you voice chat on so on. Uh... Yeah, on Splatoon or any of these other games. So you're going to have to download an app and buy a dongle. You know, like, <laughs> the thing, the, the bullshit around the whole voice chat thing. Just like, we, so we, we can't do it. Yes, you can. It was in Fortnite from the get-go. It was in Fortnite for, like, the first two days until it was disabled. Don't tell me it's not possible. Like, yeah. I... Audio processing does not add that much overhead. I know it doesn't. If it did, Discord wouldn't be as efficient as it was. 
And people are like, well, it's a switch that that processor is not very powerful. That processor is a lot more powerful than you're giving it credit for. The overhead from some simple low bitrate audio processing is nothing. It's nothing, even for a mobile processor like that. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's just a fucking joke. It's, it's nothing that's, that's for... That's the classic Nintendo. It's incredibly frustrating, but it's like, you just, why are you doing the dumb things? And Nintendo's just like, ah, oh, lol. Well. And it's like, oh, Nintendo. Like, and this, though, this is like some EA bullshit. Yes, yeah, no, uh... I don't know, man. Like, it, does, it definitely doesn't get win, uh, win any brownie points from me. And I've been a huge, huge Nintendo fan my whole life. You know, I was literally raised on Nintendo. And it's like, now I'm like, Nintendo, what are you doing? What What are you uh, doing, Nintendo? It's like that, every, that, oh, no, baby, what is you doing meme? Like, why? Yeah. yeah. It's like, why are you hurting me like this? Every <sighs> console I had until, like... The fucking Xbox One. Everyone in my family, oh, you got the new Nintendo? Yes. Yes, I did. Yes. <laughs> the Nintendo 360. It's it's awesome. Yep. <laughs> Nintendo Box 360. Yes. Oh, my God. I want an Xbox. We already have a Nintendo. Why do you want another one? It's not a Nintendo. It's different things. It's the same thing. No, no you don't understand. No, it's, it's literally not, not the same thing. Like, how can you look at that and think that's the same thing as this other thing? Like, come on. I don't know. All right, I, I'm done. I, <laughs> I've ranted and raved. I've got nothing left. I want to... I wanna... Raged against this fucking bullshit. Raged against the Nintendo. <laughs> Machine. Fuck you. Fuck you guys. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. They I'm good now. Got... Just rage, just real quick. I saw uh, articles are popping up now. <laughs> That say like Lucasfilm thought wanted uh, the Force uh, Unleashed to be or not Unleashed the 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 Force whatever the game video game the Jedi oh Rise Fallen Order Jedi. Fallen Order yeah they're like oh they wanted that game to be a very different game it was supposed to be uh, they thought well, they wanted this game to be about bounty hunters and blasters blah blah I'm like well yeah it would have been but EA canceled that game like four years ago <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was called uh, level fourteen oh eight or some shit like that. It looked fucking awesome, and EA killed it because they don't like things that are good or won't pull them in infinite money. Um, but EA thinks that single player games are dying. So yeah, and then they relaunched this game, and it's a fucking mega hit. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, who knows? Makes who them knows? tons of money. These single games are dead. Single player games are dead. Nobody's playing them. <laughs> yeah right uh, alright guys that's it for us I think we're going to wind it down there we're, Luke's got to go to bed I I'm I don't want to do anything else um, so you know we hope you enjoyed our little rants talking about Pokemon and whatever the fuck else we talked about which I've already forgotten um, but yeah you know check us out on social media Ungodly Geeks everywhere you can find us uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram we don't use most of these places but whatever you can still follow um, <laughs> check it out maybe you'll get some information there Patreon <laughs> Ungodly Geeks give us a buck get your name on our credits maybe we'll make fun of you one day I don't know uh, eternal you, love you give three dollars you get to, uh, early access to the stuff you get five dollars you get behind the scenes stuff and so on and so forth uh, but you know I think that's it for us Yep. Like, share, subscribe, and have a good day, guys. See you later. Bye. Fuck you, eh? Fuck. <laughs>